Good morning. We're continuing to look at Jesus' letters to the churches in the book of Revelation. And now we come to a really good church, the Church of Philadelphia. Jesus says, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. What a wonderful encouragement to this church. This church has nothing negative said to them. They're just encouraged all the way through. And Jesus says, I know your deeds and I have the key of David. Isn't it great to have Jesus, the door opener and the door closer in our lives? When Jesus is Lord of our life, he's the one who opens doors for us. We don't have to search for keys. We don't have to look for men to, for men to open the way for us. We have a God who opens the way for our lives, who opens the door of heaven for us, who opens the door of salvation, who opens the doors of useful ministry, effective ministry and fruitful life. Jesus opens the doors into all the good fields, the pastures of God, for us to walk into them and enjoy them. And thank God he always shuts the doors as well. He shuts the doors behind us. When Noah and his family went into the ark, it said the Lord shut the door behind them. Of course he had to. They had no strength to close such a door as that. And we have no strength to shut the door on the sin in our lives, to shut the door on the evil that we've left behind, to shut the door on our past regrets, but Jesus can do it. Through faith and repentance and trusting in Jesus, we experience those shut doors through baptism and obedience to that as well. Jesus shuts the door behind us, just like the people of Israel traveling through the Red Sea. The Lord opened a door from them into freedom, into the, the way to a promised land, and they came out of slavery. But behind them, he shut the door on the devil. He shut the door on the enemies who were pursuing them. Maybe today you feel the enemy is hot on your heels and your, your old sins are, are coming after you in chariots. Good news, Jesus can shut the door on that. Let's ask him today to shut the door. And when he shuts, no one can open. But when he opens, no one can shut. He says to this church, behold, I've set before you an open door. Let him say that to your heart today. The Lord has set before you an open door. There are places you need to go, people you need to meet, an adventure for you to have in God. As you say yes to Jesus and want his will, then go through these doors, brothers and sisters, with confidence into the fields of harvest and pasture that Jesus has opened for you. He said on many occasions, in John's Gospel, I am the door for the sheep. I am the door, I am the way. Jesus is the one who opens the way for us, for us to go into the purposes of God in our life. Let's ask him to open new doors for us today. Let's ask him to help us see the open doors that he's got right in front of us that we might be missing. And let's ask him to shut every door behind us that we want shut. You know, there was a terrible disaster once when the, uh, the Zeebrucker ferry set off into the open sea and someone had forgot to shut the back door. Because of that, the whole ship sank. Let's not launch into the future with the back door still wide open. Let's ask Jesus to shut it firmly behind us and open the future to us. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have the key of David and what you shut, no one can open and what you open, no one can shut. Thank you, Jesus, that when you open doors for us, no one can shut them so we can go through them and enter into the life that you have for us. And we thank you, Jesus, that behind us, you shut every door on the devil, on ourselves, on the world, Lord, we ask you to shut right now every door in Jesus' name. Every door to the enemy, 
so that we can continue with you into the victory that you have for us. Amen.